coach, just go ahead and state your name, your position with the team, and how long you've been here, where you're from. My name is Tony Tatro. I am the head men's cross coach here at Baldwin Wallace. I'm from a small town about an hour away called Suffield, Ohio. How would you describe Baldwin Wallace as a cross coach? We're a family. These guys, they fight hard for each other. They take care of each other. They're just exceptional guys that, that want the most out of each other. And I think that's a really important thing. Baldwin Wallace lacrosse is a family. Uh, both of my older brothers came here and played here. So I've been around the team, the program for a long time. and. If I had to sum it up in one word, it would be family. What comes to mind first would be brotherhood. We really create the environment through that kind of family atmosphere. We really come together, have each other's back, and I feel that's, that's important for the team. We created a culture from guys years past and alumni kind of setting the standard, and we just always want to make sure we're improving that every single year. So we're going to practice attacking with that kind of mindset, going after each other, holding each other accountable, and then um, try to make the most amount of plays that we can every day. Dodge hard, we're gonna force them down the alley, you not allow them to take the middle. Here you go, Reed. Do it, there it is. Yeah, Jimmy. Fire, fire. Oh, great. 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 Oh, You guys fell in your first two games to NCAA tournament opponents. What was the mantra or the mentality going into game three against Grove City on the road? The guys were hungry. They they knew going into that game that they were playing some really good lacrosse, falling to two tough opponents, and uh, they were going to give it their all in that game. And there's no doubt that we are going to be playing our best lacrosse in that third game of the season, learning from those other two games against really quality opponents. Uh, we could definitely feel the momentum shift in our direction in practice. Uh, there was just a, an intricate attention to detail going into that game, and uh, it was a fun thing to see. Bring it tight, fellas. Hey, talk is cheap. Talk is fucking cheap. It's about actions today. You got me? Yes, sir. I'm going to sell out for y'all. They do the same thing for me. You got me? Yes, sir. Put him in the dirt on three. One, two, three. Put him in the dirt! Woo! Woo! I think after that first win, it was attack the next one. Uh, that's always our mentality. What's next? What's the next one? What do we got to do to become better the next day, better than we were the day before? And that mentality is what, what really led us to that, that win streak.
you guys were rolling going into the OAC playoffs. You pretty much sealed the conference against ONU on their home turf. They were looking for a revenge game here in Berea. What was the preparation like for that game and, and the OAC playoffs in general? Yeah, Ohio Northern's a really talented team. They have a, a really fast, really explosive defense. They love to slide, and I think for us, uh, we knew they were going to give us hell. They, they, that's a big rivalry. Uh, you know, and our guys, uh, they love playing Coach St. Laurent, uh, you know, playing against a, a coach that's the head coach of uh, the PLL Redwoods is, is definitely a challenge that they love every single year. Um, and I'd be remiss to say that, um, you know, they don't look forward to that game. Um, they really do. And uh, going into that game, there was an exceptional, again, attention to detail and focus on our opponent, uh, really understanding our opponent uh, better than our opponent knows themselves. We were prepared. We've been in that game a lot. We've been in that game quite a few times. And the mentality this year, there was so much confidence going into that game. And the, men the mentality was, uh, this is our game, right? And uh, it obviously did not plan, pan out the way that we wanted. Uh, but seeing the guys understand what that feeling was the past two years and seeing them overcome the challenge of those nerves, and we've been there before, um, we went in and I think defensively we did an outstanding job and I think both teams just where they were with two All-American goalies, two exceptional defenses, that's what that game was going to be and we knew it. Both teams did. Uh, both teams struggled offensively because of how talented those defenses were and um, you know at the end of the day it's more, it's more than just lacrosse, right? And I think that's a hard thing to understand. There's going to be a winner and a loser of every single game and um, we didn't come out on top, and uh, that's something that these underclassmen are going to live with throughout their, uh, their career, that learning moment from being in that championship game and feeling it slip away um, when we played a really good game. And uh, they gave it their all. Both teams did. They left it out on that field, and, and that's why it's such a, a fun rivalry is that uh, you know, the fans are heated. Uh, the players are, are trying to wrangle in their motions and stay calm in the moment. And... Uh, you know, th these guys, they're, they're more than just one game. Uh, their consistency and their effort and their attitude every single day, is, that matters way more to me than, than a win or a loss. Um, you know, I certainly, we'd like to win every single game, but, but the, biggest, the big picture in life is that the relationships that you create on that field 
in that journey are what last. And what I really appreciate about these seniors, and it's, it's going to be hard for them to understand until years down the road. They're always going to think about that game, right? Um, every big loss, you're going to have it with you for the rest of your life. But um, don't dwell on it. But what they did that was so fun, and I don't know if it will ever be accomplished again, is going undefeated in the OAC their entire careers. They missed out on a COVID OAC season. But those seniors that graduated didn't lose a regular OAC game in the regular season for three straight years. And uh, that's a hell of an accomplishment. That, that consistency is something that every coach dreams of. Um, you know, I was asked when I was interviewed to become the head coach here at BW, uh, which would you rather be? Would you rather be consistently good or occasionally great? And it's a tough question if you're just gonna sit there and pick one. But for me, consistently good leads to occasionally great. And there's so much more to this program in the future that these guys, these seniors that graduated, set us up for tremendous success. What they were able to accomplish in three years um, was, was pretty exceptional. Uh, and it's hard to look back and, and, and think on how tough it was that, you know, everybody's, there's one team that's, that's not going to end the season in a loss every single year, one team. The other 259 schools are going to end their season on a loss. And unfortunately, that's where ours was at. But um, what they were able to accomplish, what they were able to build here, the relationships, the culture, cannot say enough about the culture of caring, the culture of being a good human, being a good man, um, being a good brother, son, uh, boyfriend, all those things. Um, they treated this program with respect. They treated, treated their teammates with respect. And uh, they set the bar really high for the culture moving forward. And for that, I, I, I appreciate the hell out of them.